Hello everybody, this is Mateo, that's a little loud. We are currently at Union Cave, because we have stuff to do, uh, such as catching a certain Pokemon that can only be found on Fridays. It's kind of odd, but an interesting little thing. This Pokemon can only be caught on Fridays, and it's deeper into the Union Cave, the parts that you can't reach until you get Surf. So yeah, that's a thing. I'm just gonna go there. Um, by now, I'm probably gonna start skipping trainers and whatever because they are all really low-leveled Pokemon, and you're barely getting any experience from them. Although the occasional trainer will still fight me because I mess up or whatever. But yeah, I'm gonna start skipping trainers because they do take a lot of time and they're not really giving much experience. I mean, this is a Charmander level 26. That's gonna give, like, nothing, and it's... There's really no use in showing it because it's not even a challenge. Look at that, 177. That's like a pixel to Heracross. This guy also has a Squirtle. Does he have a Bulbasaur as well? In which case, that's slightly interesting. 183, giving six more experience points. Way to go, Squirtle. And how does Bulbasaur stack up in giving experience points? 177 again. So I guess they think that Squirtle is slightly more difficult to take down and so it gets six more experience points. Ah, well. So yeah, that was an interesting little battle. We'll, we will never know what that item was because I messed up slightly in editing because there was a random battle right there. I can assure you, though, it was nothing of importance to our Pokedex completion uh, thing, so it's not like a trade item or anything like that. There's that lady who I either already fought or whatever. But right down here, this is the Pokemon that we want to catch, and you can only get it on Fridays, and it's kind of like a legendary Pokemon, in which if you beat it, it'll disappear and will reappear next Friday. So I suggest you save before you take this thing on. And look, they're kissing. That's so sweet. Well, here we have a Lapras. That's right, the Pokemon that you could only get in Silphco before, you can now catch in the wild, but only on Fridays. Which is kind of neat, there are a couple Pokemon like that that you can only catch on certain days. Also, Heracross just magically became a Slugma. We're throwing an Ultra Ball. We used uh, Lantern's Thunder Wave to paralyze it, and Slugma came in and just used some Embers or whatever to bring it down a little lower because it was only level 20. Anything else would have killed it. Although I, I know I was risking it having the water attack to be super effective, but obviously that wasn't too much of a problem, seeing as how I caught it. Alright, so here we are back in Viridian City, now that we have that Lapras added to our Pokedex, we are now up to 165 Pokémon, which is a pretty high number, we only have less than 90 to go. It's pretty awesome. Here we have the team, we're still training up Slugma so that he can evolve. He evolves around like level 38 or 40 or something like that, pretty late. Um, I, I usually think it's 40, but I'm pretty sure it's not. I think it's actually 38. I don't know why I think it was 40. Something tells me that um, Pokemon Coliseum had something to do with that when I was younger. Like, when you purify the Pokemon, you get all the experience that it would have gotten if it wasn't a Shadow Pokemon, and um, by the time I purified it, it, it had gotten up to like level 40, and of course, once it got up that high, it evolved. I, I don't know. Something like that. Anyways, we are fighting Blue now. He doesn't have a specific type. He uses all different kinds of Pokemon, which is pretty interesting. I honestly wish more gym leaders did that. Used uh, more like just different types rather than just being based around one because it is more difficult and it forces you to use different Pokemon in the battle rather than just one or two that are super effective against that type. Um, I mean I get the whole reason why they go for one type so they have like a theme going on but I still think that like for the last gym later they could have a um a guy who just has a whole bunch of different typed Pokemon or something. I had the most difficult time saying that, holy crap. Either that or the champion. Sometimes the champion has different typed Pokemon, but sometimes they also have a theme going, like there's uh, Steven from Gen 3, who has all Steel types, and then there's, um, what's his name, Wallace from Gen 3 as well, who has all Water types. 
Um, Alder is kind of themed. I mean, he has three bug types, but then he also has different typed Pokemon as well. So that's alright, I guess. But still, I mean, at least the champion should have all different po Pokemon of different types. Rather than just being an easy, oh hey, it's a wa another water type trainer, just Thunderbolt everything, you know? But that's just my opinion. Crossing my fingers for Gen 6. Also, crossing my fingers for a dark type gym in Gen 6, holy crap. Also, how about that fairy type? It's pretty interesting. Yep. Sandstorm, seriously? Alright then, whatever you want to do. But still, yeah, fairy types, pretty interesting. And I'm pretty sure they've already announced a fairy type gym. So the brand new type that's only been around for one generation has gotten a gym sooner than Dark has, which has been around ever since second generation. <sighs> Poor Dark types. Oh, Flamethrower on Slugma, that's pretty good. We're gonna get rid of Harden, because Harden is lame. And Slugma learned Flamethrower, that's awesome. A really good fire move, too bad we aren't using Slugma. I've actually tried to use Macargo and Heart Gold or whatever, but you get him, like, way too late for me. There's that one guy that you can go to the- He's in the Pokemon Center, and you give him, like, a code of some sort, and he will give you an egg. It's supposed to be kind of like a Pokemon event kind of thing, but you can look up the code online somehow and get it, and you can still get the egg just the same. So you can get a Slugma early that way, and I tried using it, but overall I just didn't like the team there. I was using... I wanted to use a Victory Bell because I never had a chance to use one because I have Fire Red, but getting a Leaf Stone in that game is a complete and total pain. I wanted to use Mamoswine, but I couldn't because getting Ancient Power on Mamoswine is a complete and total pain. So a lot of my Pokemon were just kind of eh, and I wasn't really enjoying it too much because I couldn't get them to fully evolve. I mean, I was walking around with a Weeping Bell and a Pile of Swine. I had an Electrode, which was alright, although I got him kind of late and had a difficult time training him. Like, I think I got him post-game. Um, yeah, I did get through the, the main game in that one, which is the farthest I've made it. The farthest I've made it in Heart Gold is like three gyms in Kanto or something like that. Also, Heracross, you better not miss Megahorn this time. Didn't even matter, that Sandstorm actually helped him out. Wow. Great. Okay, um, new plan, Zatu, why not? It's something. It's pro it might be faster. Nightshade, what am I doing? I should be using Fly. Alakazam's defense is complete and total crap. And he would have gone faster. Yeah, Fly was definitely the better option there. I don't know what was going on. You know, whatever. Jeez, oh, it was a critical hit. I was gonna say, man, even against, even against Zatu, which is not very effective against that psychic, did a lot. Holy crap, Alakazam. But it was a crit, so whatever. Ah, oh, well, either way, I beat him in two turns, although Zatu did take some damage because I chose the wrong move, honestly. And finally, Gyarados. Lantern says hi. It's kind of a shame that I can't get Thunderbolt or... Thun well, Thunderbolt on Lantern, because seriously, Spark is just like the worst Electric-type move. At least it's still considered special. If it was considered physical, it would be even worse for Lapras, but it's still pretty bad. Like, please give me Thunderbolt somehow. I still have yet to find the TM, I'm pretty sure you get it in the, uh, casino-type place. So, yeah, I'm probably not gonna end up getting that, especially considering with how far I've recorded, I only have to get, like, 10 Pokemon. I only have to get, like, 10 Pokemon. I think that's all I have left. So there really isn't much to do at all. So getting Thunderbolt at this point, at that point, is kind of useless, honestly. Although, I don't know, maybe. I do have a ton of money. Also, teleporting back to the Pokemon Center. What are we doing? We are flying. So, we now have all eight gym badges of Kanto. And now we're just gonna evolve a ton of Pokemon for the Pokedex because, as the title says, this is a 251 run where I'm catching all 251 Pokemon in the game. That's how I play Pokemon. And, well, first off, just really quickly, I want to open up my final training spot 
which is um, better than Victory Road, in my opinion, just because it has slightly higher level Pokemon and more evolved Pokemon and stuff like that, so it's more experience. But yeah, you have once you get all eight badges, you can talk to Professor Oak. He will open up Mount Silver. Blah, excuse me. He will open up Mount Silver for you, and the pathway to there is the training spot that I will use. I'm also going to use it because it has a Pokemon Center right on it as well. So you can just fly to it, and you can also just heal up right next to the place where you get the wild Pokemon. So overall, it's pretty good. Oh great, I have to walk through Victory Road again, and then I change my mind. I'm just going to fly to Viridian City instead and just walk that way instead. That'll be much easier on my legs. Or on my character's legs, I guess. So we're just flying all over the place all of a sudden. Sure, Zatu's getting really tired or something. Alright, so heading over to the Indigo Plateau, just like Professor Oak said, even if you have all eight gym badges, and you go here immediately, you still can't get in because you need to get Professor Oak's permission. It's kind of weird like that. I mean, you should just be able to show all eight gym badges and be like, hey, you can let me in. But no, that is no such thing. But here we are, Route 28, the final training location. Tons of high-level Pokemon that we are going to be fighting here, although off-screen you're just going to see all the evolutions that take place. Also, now that I have uh, gotten all of the gym badges, I'm also going to start trading in between games. So I'm going to tr trade over Pokemon that you can only catch in silver and gold, as well as Pokemon that you can al only get in uh, yellow, which there really aren't that many of them other than the fossil Pokemon Kabuto, Ammonite. Air oh, well, you can't get an Aerodactyl in this game. So Kabuto, Ammonite are two of them. The legendaries from Gen 1 you can't get in this game. And I think that's, oh, the Generation 1 starters as well, and I'm pretty sure that's all that's going to be traded from yellow. But first off here we have Slugma evolving at level 38, like I guess. It's not level 40 like I thought, or always seemed to think. And he just grows a giant shell. Slugma, ha or Macargo has a really cool design. I love the idea of a magma snail, but his stats are just so poor for what he is and his typing as well. Also at level 35, Dratini evolves into Dragonair, um, which is very nice. It's gonna take, oh, level 30 actually. It's gonna take four freaking ever to get this thing up to a Dragonite, but I will eventually. And it'll be two seconds for you, but I can assure you, it was a much longer time for me. So yeah, level 30, we get a Dragonair. Uh, Dragonair at level 55 will become a Dragonite. See, what did I say? Five seconds for you? Uh, quite a long time for me. Luckily, I have speed up, so I can run the game at like 3,000 times its normal speed. Well, not... Okay, let's just say a thousand times its normal speed. But it still took a while, even though I had that speed up. Like, god, just imagine not having that speed up. It would be awful. Am I going to teach Wing Attack? It is a stab move, but no. I like Dragonite's moveset as it is. Okay, so we are now in the second floor of the Pokemon Center. We've never seen this place before. But basically, you go up to the lady at the far right. She's in front of this machine, and she will allow you to trade with your Generation 1 games. Um, so, yeah, that's a thing. The only thing is that the Pokemon you trade over from Crystal can't have any new moves. So what's a move that was introduced Generation 2? Um, I think... I, I want to say that out... Yeah, Outrage. So you can't trade over a Dragonite with Outrage. Or... Uh, Whirlwind. Not Whirlwind. Um, what's it called? Crap. Twister. Or anything like that. The thing is, since this is emulated, I can't technically trade over Pokemon. So basically, what I'm going to do is say, hey, this Pokemon is traded from this game, and just pretend like I traded it, kind of. Um, but actually, I'm using a Game Shark code to get the Pokemon into my game. I know that's technically hacking, but because this is emulated, I have no other way 
to trade. So this is going to be the best that we have. Uh, which is also why the Pokemon are going to have, like, levels in the 40s. Like, Charmander over there is level 40. Because, um, basically what I do is I put a code to find them in the wild no matter where I am. And I'm just catching them on this route so they're at the level that they would be at this route, which is in the 40s. Anyways, at level 16, Charmander will evolve into Charmeleon. And then at 36, Charma Charmeleon will evolve into Charizard, uh, which you see right here in front of you. Um, at level 16, Bulbasaur evolves into Ivysaur. And at level 32, Ivysaur evolves into Venusaur. And both of which, both of these Pokemon are found in Pokemon Yellow only. You get Char Charmander Route 25, that's the route above Cerulean City. And you get Bulbasaur in Cerulean City. There's a girl in one of the houses that'll give it to you if you have a Pokemon that's happy with you or something like that. And here we have Squirtle. He is also obtained from Pokemon Yellow. Uh, he will be given to you by Officer Jenny in uh, Vermilion City. Yeah, Vermilion, the one with Lieutenant Surge. And at level 16, he will evolve into War Turtle. And at 36, he will evolve into Blastoise. If I had to rate the three Generation 1 starters in terms of design, it would probably go uh, Blastoise, Charizard, Venusaur. Blastoise beating Charizard just because he has the huge cannons on his back. But if I had to rate them on usability, probably... Okay, competitive usability, it would go Venusaur, Charizard, Blastoise. Um, but regular in-game usability, probably Charizard, Venusaur, Blastoise, in my opinion. I don't know, Blastoise just isn't too good, in my opinion. But he's alright. He's a good starter. He's look cool looking, too. But with that, with those evolutions, we're just starting with the trading. In the next part, I'll trade with myself more, because I have no friends. Hooray!